And we are back. Uh, Stuart Mandel with The Athletic is out with his predictions. Uh, you see Georgia, Tennessee, no big surprise there. A lot of teams at eight and four, Vanderbilt. And uh, there's a shocker at the bottom, Florida at three and nine. Let's get over to the west side. LSU the favorite. LSU five and three in the conference. That is uh, the one that we want to talk about as we say hello to Stuart Mandel. Stuart, thanks for the time. Uh, a lot to unpack here, but why don't we start with Bama losing three conference games. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Paul. Um, yeah, not, not a prediction you take you, you make with, uh, without realizing the, the potential for Nick Saban to make you look um, really, really dumb, as he has done many times before. But all offseason, I've been trying to talk myself into what is it about this Alabama team? If we didn't know that they had four Alabama jerseys, so it was this personnel – and they've lost the number one pick in the draft at quarterback, the number 12 pick of the draft at running back, and Will Anderson, and has such uncertainty at quarterback that Nick Saban brought in a transfer from Notre Dame after spring practice, and he hasn't managed to win the job. Why would I predict this team to go 11-2 and two again, like they always do? Uh, I can't – I don't see it. And not to say it's impossible, but this looks like a pretty flawed team that has a chance to be his worst team, relatively speaking, Nine and three is not bad. Uh, his worst team since 2010. And um, I'm very curious to see week one, but especially week two against uh, Texas, how Jalen Monroe looks, how the other quarterbacks he might put out there look, because that has a big thing to do with um, that projection. So, Stuart, I, I think I would have understood a little bit easier if they'd lost to Texas, but you apparently have them winning that game, do you not, and then losing three conference games. Explain. Okay. It's a tough conference, uh, as you can see by the, the predicted standings there. I mean, part, part of it is I'm just a real big believer in LSU. Um, I, I mean, in contrast to Alabama, I struggle to find weak spots on LSU. I'm a big believer in Jaden Daniel. I think that defense is stacked top to bottom. Um, when you're picking up Notre Dame's leading rusher as a transfer and he's only going to be one of three or four guys touching the ball, you know, that's a pretty good sign. But you've also got in this conference a Tennessee team that has gotten much better, uh, an A&M team that I think will bounce back this year. Ole Miss is always going to be dangerous, Lane Kiffin. So um, it's not – it doesn't feel like two, three years ago when Alabama could just roll out the ball and seven of the eight teams on their conference schedule, they were, you knew they were going to beat. There's going to be a lot of, I think, a lot of toss-up games or swing games, as you would say, over the course of that season. So, Stuart, since you did the predicting, which three conference games does Alabama lose? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I, I don't have the, the schedule right out in front of me. I, but, I, can, I can help. Um, I, I'll be happy to help you because we do have the schedule. And you, so, so you have them beating Texas, I presume, based on uh, what you said. And here's the schedule after that. Conference games, home game at Ole Miss, road game at Mississippi State, Road game at A&M, Arkansas at home, Tennessee at home, LSU at home, November 11th at Kentucky, and November 25th at Auburn. I hope that helped. I believe the three I had were uh, at A&M, LSU, and because Hugh Freeze has always been a, a thorn in Nick Saban's side, the Iron Bowl. So, Stuart. You, you it'll make me very popular in the state well, of Alabama. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, it, it, you talked about what you saw from LSU and, and how they don't have a weakness, and that's why you picked them to beat Alabama to win the division. What, what do you see in Auburn that would convince you that Auburn is going to beat Alabama in that final game? And, and yeah, we all know about that game. We've been there a few times. Yeah, that game's three months away. None of us really know what those teams will look like. Um, I... I think that Hugh Freeze, I don't know why it's gone under the radar so much in terms of the offseason hires. It was one of the, the biggest impact hires out there. He's a proven winner in the SEC. He's a great offensive coach. Does he have the personnel to, for instance, do what uh, Gus Malzahn did his first season at Auburn back then? No, I don't think so. I did see Peyton Thorne perform at a pretty high level at Michigan State two years ago, so I think that was a good pickup. So I, I said in that same column, um, nobody looks below the actual table with the standings, but no. one of the categories I had was complete wild cards, Auburn and A&M. There's a wide range of outcomes for Auburn. I don't have a great sense 
and this is becoming, by the way, harder and harder to make predictions in college football in the preseason, the transfer portal. So many of these teams are going to look so different because of the guys they lost and the guys they brought in, and Auburn has a lot of those. But if the talent level is at least decent, and I think it will be, I expect him to pull a couple surprises over the course of the year. But And, and I, I do understand, Stuart, that when you make these predictions, uh, you're, you're, you're doing many, so you're not – so the schedule, for those who don't know – Utah is start, starts it off, home game at Tennessee, uh, with Tennessee, at Kentucky, Vandy, at South Carolina, Georgia, Jacksonville, Arkansas at home, at LSU, at Florida, excuse me, uh, at Missouri and at Florida State. Three and nine is, is, is simply an unbelievable prediction for the University of Florida. A lot of people are watching Swamp Kings right now and are reliving uh, the glory days of Urban Meyer. So how do, how do you arrive on that? Yeah, if that comes true, and of course, the chances it will, now that I put it out there, are not very high, it would be their worst season since 1979. But So the starting point is Florida had a losing record the last two years. They are replacing the number four pick in the draft at quarterback with a guy from Wisconsin, and I don't like to criticize college players, but I would just say go look up the stats, the production over the course of his three years there. Um, and, and also... You know, look at, as you said, a really tough schedule. you got two, you know, just, just bad luck, but you're playing at the two-time Pac-12 champion. You're going to play a Florida State team at the end of the year that I'm picking to win the ACC, as a lot of people are. You have the two-time national champions in your division. You have a Tennessee program that I think is, you know, under Josh Heupel heading in the right direction. In fact, as I look down that list of SEC East programs, if you just kind of play a quick game of, is this program on the upswing – around staying around where they are on the downswing tennessee upswing south carolina upswing missouri in my opinion could be wrong up upswing kentucky around the same if not better vanderbilt even if it's just a little bit i think is a little bit on the right direction so combination of not a great year personnel wise for florida to begin with and a tough year in their own division which has often as you know the sec east has often been a laughing stock i don't think it is anymore i think there's a lot of good programs in that division Stuart, before you go, uh, we thought realignment had ended for the year. Maybe it hasn't based on all this reporting from your outfit and others about the fact the ACC is seriously considering, may even vote in a couple of days, to include Stanford, California, and SMU. Your thoughts? Uh, it's a, as I described it yesterday in a column, a marriage of mutual desperation. I mean, these – Cal and Stanford basically need a bailout after what's happened with the um, the destruction of their conference. These are two – forget football. These are two programs that need Power 5 money to fund all of their other sports that win national championships and go to Final Fours. And if they end up left in the scrap heap in the Mountain West, that's going to be the end of all of that. So that's their desperation. And the ACC, you wouldn't think, would be in a desperate state. They have a grant of rights that goes till 2036. Um there's no, you know, no TV deals are falling apart there. But you've got your, you know, one of your two marquee schools out there publicly threatening to leave if they don't make more money. And so it seems to me, based on what I've heard, what my colleagues have reported, that the way that the ACC is going to attempt to rectify that is to bring in these three new schools at a reduced share, or in SMU's case, they're willing to come for free. ESPN has to pay a pro rata per their contract for each of these schools. So you're taking a full share from three schools. And you're taking, you know, you're giving those schools just a little bit of it, and you're taking the rest and distributing it to your current members. And so there's a chance I don't, you know, there's a chance Florida State, Clemson, if they perform on the field, it's going to be performance based, can make an extra ten million dollars a year off this. Basically, Cal, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big redistribution plan. We're going to take these three teams in, basically for the sole purpose of making a little extra money we can give to our current schools. It's. Um, I don't like it. I, I don't. This is not what college sports should be. Cal and Stanford should not be flying across the country to play uh, Miami or Pitt or Boston College and sporting events. But it is where we are. Um, an entire major conference has been blown off the map because they couldn't get enough TV money. And uh, that's if you're. It's everybody's in um, scramble mode now, and that includes the ACC because they see what happened to the Pac-12. Pac-12 had chances over the years to add members and decline. They had a bit of an overinflated expectation of themselves in the TV market, and it came back to bite them. So I think a lot of people in the ACC see this as like, we're doing something. 
We're doing something proactive to try to keep it the same thing from happening to us a few years down the road. Stuart Mandel from The Athletic. Thank you very much, Stuart. Uh, quite a conversation about myriad subjects. We appreciate Stuart joining us again. If you missed it, predicting Alabama to lose three SEC games. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.